Hi, welcome to Intermolecular Forces, Solids and Liquids. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about colligative properties. Specifically, we're going to look at some definitions of terms, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, vapor pressure lowering, and finally some practice problems at the end. So what are colligative properties? Physical properties of solutions that depend on the quantity or concentration but not on the kind or identity of the solute particles added to a pure solvent. The pure solvent is typically water and in many of our examples today we're going to be using water as our solvent. Could the solvent be something different? Of course it could, but for the sake of today we're going to focus on water. Solute particles can range from ionic compounds to molecules to rocks. The freezing and boiling points of water change when solutes are added. One mole of any particle will have the same effect on the freezing or boiling point, and we're going to look at that now in more detail. There are three colligative properties to consider. We're going to look at freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, and vapor pressure lowering. Let's start off by talking about freezing point depression. When any chemical salt, in other words, a compound that's ionic, such as sodium chloride or calcium chloride, is added to water, the freezing point of the water is going to decrease. So for example, salting the roads in the winter. The added salt lowers the freezing point and helps to melt the snow or ice. So if we look over here at this chart, the normal freezing point of our solvent, in this case water, would be right here. By adding a solute to the solvent, it's going to lower the freezing point. So instead of having our freezing point right here, it's now been lowered to here. So in the case of using rock salt on roads in the winter time, instead of having water freeze at zero degrees Celsius, now maybe water will freeze at negative five degrees Celsius or negative six degrees Celsius. So without the addition of a solute like sodium chloride or calcium chloride to our roads in the winter time, ice would form on our roads at around zero degrees Celsius. By adding sodium chloride or calcium chloride to the roads, the freezing point is now depressed and due to that depression, ice won't form on the roads until maybe negative five or negative six degrees Celsius, which makes our roads more safe. Boiling point elevation. The presence of a non-volatile solute in a given solvent creates a solution with boiling point temperatures that is higher than the boiling point of temperature of just the solvent. So for example, antifreeze, which is literally antifreeze. We're trying to prevent the freezing of water. The chemical name for antifreeze is ethylene glycol. So a solute like antifreeze is added to water, our solvent, to create a solution, a mixture of antifreeze and water that has a higher boiling point than the boiling point of the pure solvent. Again, we can look over at our chart. The boiling point of the solvent would be right here. By adding antifreeze, or you could look at it in this case, anti-boil, to our solvent, it's going to raise the boiling point up to right here. How does this help us? If your car gets above 100 degrees Celsius, the water that's in your car does not go through phase change at 100 degrees Celsius. It goes through phase change at a higher temperature, which helps prevent your car from overheating. Molecular versus ionic compounds and their effect on colligative properties. When one mole of sugar, a molecular substance, is dissolved in water, one mole of particles is produced in solution. So here I have the chemical formula for sucrose as a solid. If I put it into water, the only thing that's going to be broken are those weak intermolecular forces. My London dispersion forces, my dipole forces, more specifically my hydrogen bonds. When those forces are overcome by the water molecules, I am left with just individual molecules of sucrose. So for every one mole of solid sucrose that I put into my solvent, I get one mole of solute particles out. When one mole of an ionic substance is dissolved in water, the results are different. The ionic substance separates into individual ions. 
So sodium chloride solid dissolved in water will form one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions, as we can see down here, for a total of two moles, and that's really important. Thus, one mole of solid sodium chloride produces two moles of particles and will depress the freezing point of water twice as much as the mole of sugar. The greater the number of ions, the greater the effect on the freezing and boiling points. And that is our key takeaway point with colligative properties for today. So for example, which ionic solid will have a greater effect on the boiling and freezing point? Well, when I look at one mole of potassium chloride, I have one mole of potassium ions and one mole of chloride ions for a total of two moles of ions. Compare that to one mole of strontium chloride. If this dissolves in water, I'm going to get one mole of strontium ions, SR plus two, two moles of chloride ions for a total here of three moles of ions. The more ions I have in my solvent as I make my solution, the greater effect I'm going to have on the freezing and boiling point. Therefore, the ionic solid that has a greater effect most definitely would be the strontium chloride. Now let's talk about vapor pressure. A liquid in a closed container is at equilibrium with its associated vapor above the liquid. So an equilibrium between vaporization and condensation. The pressure exerted by the vapor is called vapor pressure. A substance with no measurable vapor pressure is considered non-volatile. In other words, it's not going to vaporize very easily. So examples of non-volatile substances would be something like sodium chloride and ethylene glycol. A substance with measurable vapor pressure is considered volatile. It's going to go through the phase of liquid to gas very, very easily. We're looking for weak intermolecular forces. So something like acetone, which is nail polish remover. And if you've ever used nail polish remover or spilled nail polish remover, you know that it has extremely weak intermolecular forces and that it's going to go from a liquid to a gas very, very quickly. So it would have a high vapor pressure. Lowering the vapor pressure, adding a non-volatile solute to a solvent lowers the vapor pressure. The extent to which a non-volatile solute lowers the vapor pressure is proportional to its concentration. So here I have a closed system at equilibrium with just volatile solvent particles. Some of these particles are going to stay as a liquid, others are going to go through phase change to a gas. They're also going to go in the opposite direction, going from a gas to a liquid. When we add a non-volatile solute, as represented by these red spheres, the rate of vaporization is reduced. When equilibrium is reestablished, we have fewer molecules in the gas phase as we did over here. So vapor pressure has been reduced due to the presence of these non-volatile solute particles. So let's look at a vapor pressure practice question. Which of the following solutions would have the lowest vapor pressure? And much like the freezing point depression and boiling point elevation, this is all going to be about number of particles in the solution. So when glucose is dissolved in water, I'm still only going to get one mole of glucose particles. If I have one molar magnesium chloride, and I think about the ions that that will break down into, that'll break down into a magnesium ion and two chloride ions for a total of three ions. When I look at sodium nitrate, that is going to break down into one mole of sodium ions, one mole of nitrate ions for a total of two ions. When I look at sodium bromide, again, we're gonna have one mole of sodium ions, one mole of bromine ions for again, a total of two ions. And then pure water is just going to remain as water, so that will be unaffected. So which of the following solutions would have the lowest vapor pressure? You're looking for the one that's going to have the highest number of dissolved particles in solution. Therefore, my one molar magnesium chloride solution would have the lowest vapor pressure. So what did you learn? We talked about some definitions of terms. We went over the concept of freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, 
and vapor pressure lowering, and then finally did some practice problems at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.